you, Mr Deputy Speaker. In my 16 years of being a councillor and an MP, I have never met a NIMBY in my constituency. I have met people who are passionate about their neighbourhoods, people who want to retain a sense of community cohesion. They want to ensure their communities can thrive and continue to evolve. In fact, I've learned that people tend to know what works in their neighbourhoods much better than any parliament or particularly any developer. And therefore, in any planning reform, it is so vital to respect that. And for me, uh, what it really is about in the detail of this bill is how it actually works in practice. After all, this is a key piece of legislation affecting real people, real homes and real lives. On this, completion notes, I think, are essential to any planning reform, and I welcome the inc this inclusion in the bill. From my personal experience, there is absolutely no point in reforming planning if it's just going to add to the backlog. We cannot and should not have more than one million homes that have been granted planning permission but still have not been built. I appreciate there is no silver bullet in dealing with the lack of housing stock, but I certainly think that Clause 100 will go a long way to help. By the same to token, I absolutely welcome the renewed emphasis on local plans and appropriate design codes. Personally, I'm a great believer in local plans, so much so that I'm quite surprised that many local authorities still don't have one. For me, one of the key aspects of a local plan is that it appreciates nuances of individual communities. And with that in mind, I do have some concerns regarding provisions to make permanent the regime for pavement licences in Clause 184. Again, it goes back to what I was saying about different areas having different requirements. This should not be one pavement licence scheme fits all. For instance, neighbourhoods like Pimlico in my constituency welcome a fresco dining, and it works. Whereas in Soho, we are at saturation point. The streets are far too narrow for it to be practical and extended pavement licensing scheme would cause serious problems for <coughs> residents. So I therefore urge the Minister to ensure that we can show a concerted effort to give local authorities the freedoms and flexibilities they need in the accompanying guidance to the Bill to respond to local variants without unnecessary centralisation. Um, and to make one last point on centralisation, as others, I have some rev reservations about the proposed measures that could come through secondary legislation, spe specifically Clause 96 in the street votes. I absolutely understand that this is a subject to informative procedure. However, I would ask the Minister to give planning authorities a meaningful period in which to respond to consultations on changes to planning rules. And finally, Mr Speaker, I was quite surprised to see uh, Clause 187, vagrancy and begging, included in this bill. As, uh, as you know, I have been working very hard to secure the um, abolition of the, or the repeal of the Vagrancy Act, and therefore I would welcome the Minister explaining what this clause actually entails. Um, we wouldn't want it to override the fact that we've repealed this Act uh, within the Police, Crime, Sentencing and Courts Act 2022. So I think we do all need in this House an explanation about what this clause actually means. Um, I, do, I am concerned that Section 4 of the Vengsi Act refers to rogues and vagabonds. Uh, we live in the 21st century and I haven't seen a rogue or a vagabond on the streets of Westminster for some time and therefore I do think we need some clarification on this point. But apart from that, I think this bill does deliver for levelling up across the country and I do welcome it with caveats about the Vengsi Act.